Hello everyone. It is Saturday morning here in Chicago. It's about nine o'clock. I am your host, the Cowboy. This is Elliot Wave Cafe. Let's get started. All right, so we're going to take a look at a few markets today. Since uh, I call this Macro Cafe, that means that we're usually running through, um, you know, all the large indices and um, see the wave counts, what's been happening in there, uh, what I see in terms of counts. Um, we want to also take a look at Bitcoin as we're finishing up the video. I think there are some interesting developments in there as well. I also have some interesting charts to show you on the S&P 500 and uh, all of that and more in today's episode uh, and before we jump on to all of that let me uh, take you over for those of you that are uh, new um, take you over here to the pigeon and the statue this is my free newsletter uh, there is a strong pigeon report every single week uh, that covers the markets um, i usually post that on saturday so i'll work on this later today or uh, be posted either tonight or tomorrow morning then i have the daily drip which is a um, you know free look here into the market updates every single morning uh, between five and seven i work on that and um, I, I give you the latest updates on the markets and accounts so uh, this is all free you can sign up and it should be delivered to your uh, inbox also you can find me here on twitter uh, at uh, elliot cafe go ahead and uh, follow me up here uh, again just a bunch of charts commentaries throughout the day and just kind of market outlooks in general um, the last place where you can find me is also on telegram here on my this is the pro trading room uh, you can take a free this is a paid uh, um, you know service but you can take a 30-day free trial see what we do and how you like it and um, you know you want to stick around or you just want to try us out and see how you feel if it fits you but there's a bunch of uh, stuff happening in here along with uh, you know live trade alerts uh, daily market commentary daily videos uh, both on alts and bitcoin uh, um, and on equities obviously the macro over review that i do every single day so it's a pretty active room i'll go ahead and give that a try so uh let's uh, uh go ahead and get started all right um so we're going to start here with uh, the dow jones uh you know i have a, a list of things here with a little bit of a green flag that i'm going to run through and um basically um you know we've kind of turned bullish in the market uh starting um you know after the mid January like around January 20th uh, I started to flip my uh, view from more of a bearish outlook to more of a bullish outlook due to the um, strength that I was seeing inside the market the breath indicator the breaking of the moving averages the trend line stuff like that that uh, suggested that we could already have a completed uh, correction also the Fed uh, was there with um, probably running towards the end of their hiking cycle so all of these are uh, suggesting more of a bullish picture ahead now for the past uh, you know couple of weeks in here actually since the beginning of February the markets have been taking a little bit of a turn to the downside um, you know on renewed fears that the Fed might go a little bit more that the inflation is running um, you know hotter than expected it's, yeah there have been a couple of reports that have been climbing just slightly uh, but I don't think that's enough to really derail kind of what's been starting since uh, late last year and um, I think a lot of the the, the breath indicators um, and at least the things that I watch continue to show improvement overall and accumulation by Wall Street so looking at the Dow Jones this one it's been the first market that's had a pretty strong uh, rally uh, again since October it was the first one that that had this this uh, kind of a strong climb above this previous B wave and I think that's a wave one of an impulse um, you know we've had it prior as an ABC as, as an A uh, um, ABC of a flat uh, with the possibility of it breaking lower again I think we're just consolidating now and we're probably going to uh, shoot back to the upside but um, 
you know, so on the daily updates, you'll see kind of how I'm following discounts uh, on, a, on a smaller uh, intraday basis as well. So this is, in my view, a flat formation. Uh, you have a three wave down in A, we have a flat, then you go up in a wave B, and now we're doing a C wave, um, you know, which can actually be finished at any time in here. Um, you know, maybe we we'll take over this A wave low, maybe not. But once this completes, then we would be looking for this market to push to the upside. Now, uh, the, the, the main um, levels, and you'll see talking, you'll see me talking about this throughout the rest of the video, uh, kind of, um, you know, where the line in the sands are, um, uh, where the line, uh, where the lines in the sand are, it's um, basically when you're starting to get below 61.8 retracement of your previous impulse so that it comes at about 30,925 at the moment so at about 31,000 below those levels uh, things could start to deteriorate a little bit more and you can get actually into the next leg lower and overtake these lows from October 13th so there's still a little bit of room to work this wave two can take um, you know several shapes it could be obviously um, you know it could be a W it could be an X, uh, this could be a wave A, B, and Y. So every time you have a correction, you know, you're trying to, um, it, it's hard to tell exactly what type of a correction would you get. I always start with a simple zigzag and then I go from there, right? Um, if I notice that, for example, the B wave rises, you know, higher than 61.8% of A, then that kind of tells me, and if it's in three waves, that kind of tells me that's probably a flat. Flats are going all the way up to about 88.7, um, you know, just above 85 percent you can, you can kind of start to uh, even though the rules are saying that they should be towards uh, 90 percent but uh you know that kind of uh, you know I, i've seen a bunch of flats that are happening below that so you know again the, the corrections can can be tricky and they can take several shapes and forms so i'm not gonna uh, you know tell you that exactly it's going to be an abc we'll watch it um but i do know that i don't want it to get below 61.8 um, and I also know, um, you know, kind of what to look for if, uh, uh, let's say, we're getting more complex in here. So, for example, if this becomes a wave W um, and, and that's a wave X in here, right, then that's an impulse. That means that it cannot be a C, that is probably an A, and if you get a B wave back and then a C wave decline, right, then this switches to a W, X, Y, and you can still continue. So, um, again, these levels are not perfection, they're fluid um, and adjustable, but what I do know is that I'm watching at a higher degree uh, a wave 2 um, overall, and that can take, uh, again, several several shapes. So that's kind of how I'm looking at it. Uh, the other count that we've been tracking when uh, when uh, my viewer mostly on the bearish side was this ABC in here, and uh, I was uh, counting this as a wave one and a wave two, and then I was waiting for the market to actually turn back lower, because if you have an ABC flat, you know, you're supposed to start selling off aggressively, and the market did not do that. They just actually, you know, moved uh, sideways and consolidated, which kind of pushed me back uh, um, in starting to put this count on the back uh, burner. So now, um, you know, if this is, you know, for those of you that are bearish and, and you're thinking that this is the one that could work out, um, I'll show you this. And, and um, you know, there's a couple of ways to count this. You can, again, you can go way uh, wave two, um, this wave two placed uh, back here. Let me just get rid of these guys. You can place it back there like that. You can have a wave two and now you're beginning, let's say the next sequence has a one, two, three, four, five. Um, or, you know, wave two actually terminates right there. And then wave one, it's this back here. This was a wave two. Uh, since you over, since we didn't go back above those levels. So again, just a one, two, one, two, and then you, you begin, uh, you know, a much larger decline. So again, this has to become very impulsive. Uh, and it also has to overtake the 61.8, um, to start to, um, you know, re-initiate the bearish counts and, um, you know, uh, let's say upgrade this count uh, to a primary perspective. So that's kind of what I'm watching um, right now in um, Dow Jones. 
If I go over to the NASDAQ, you will see uh, there's a similar picture. So again, um, the count from this high to this low is a wave two through an ABC. Then we go up in a leading diagonal in a wave one at the minor degree, followed by a wave two. And then we're climbing higher again in a wave one and a wave two. Now you can see in your wave one, it's a bit longer than this one. That's a shorter degree, which means that the next moves uh, in the NASDAQ should be quite aggressive. So that's, um, that's a way to kind of tell, right, uh, if you're correcting your approach or not. Um, the other um, possibility here is that this could be, um, you know, some kind of a diagonal still forming in here and you continue to climb higher. That's a little bit towards the, you know, the bottom of my preferences. Um, but the main one on the bullish perspective is this. And again, we have pulled back about 38.2%. Um, let me just adjust, um, go back to a daily chart in here, because now you can see basically the trend line. So, um, you know, we pulled back about 38.2%. There's still room to pull back till about 61.8, which is sits at about 11,466. So this is again, um, pretty much a cut line for, uh, this approach, anything bigger than that, it starts to be bigger than a wave two of a higher degree. It starts to look a little disproportionate and, um, you know, unlikely that it will continue to be on the bullish side. So, um, you know, that's a, a pretty, I think a pretty clean clue to kind of look at that that way. Um, obviously on the upside in here, uh, to me, this does look corrective, you know, so you can see, and then if you go on the pigeon and the statue, you'll see, um, you know, the wave counts inside uh, and the labeling inside uh, back in here. So uh, we had some, you know, decent closes, let's say back um, yesterday, you know, the markets kind of pulled back into the close. Maybe it's not strong enough just yet, but what I would watch, uh, and I don't want to get into much detail on, on these smaller time frames, but if we're starting to get again back above, um, you know, let's say 12,380 in here, I think uh, then we're ready to move uh, much, much higher. So that's kind of what I would be watching. Um, you know, I'm not 100% sure if this wave two is complete or not. Again, it's got room to continue to develop, but I know where the limits are on that. So that's, um, that's my view on the NASDAQ. And again, for those of you that are bearish on here, uh, let's go to the bearish count. And you will see that I'm labeling this as a WX and then this is a wave A, uh, and then you go in a simple ABC uh, to a wave B into the 78.6, and then what you want it to happen is um, for this move to break below the trend line in here, and then go below the 61.8 of this advance, and then, uh, you know, break 10,700, and then, you know, then the next leg lower, it's likely happening. So for right now, um, you know, they have taken this, you know, we have taken this high. Uh, it's not yet a super clean impulse, it's just a three-wave move. It's got potential, um, you know, but it's still quite difficult yet to know exactly which one will pan out. So we'll continue to watch these clues as, um, you know, the days and weeks unfold going forward. Let's take a look at the Russell. Um, and here on the bearish count, you can do an WX, Y, X, and then do an A, B, and then again down in C. This was just a simple A, B, C up. Um, you know, let me just check. I think you might have equality there as well. Yeah, you have a pretty good equality there. So that's a, you know, good clue for the bears. Uh, that's possibly, you know, there's a next leg lower beginning. What I would watch here again, it's, um, you know, if you're able to kind of get back below 1830 um, and continue your impulse lower, I think that's going to be a decent clue that, that you know, they're probably going to get another sell-off. On the bullish side, I'm looking at this as an ABC uh, for a wave two, followed by a wave one, a wave two, and then another one and another two. Uh, back here, let me just delete that. And, um, you know, there's this 1825, and again... Um, you know, if I pull the fibs back, you will see that it kind of coincides with this um, 61.8. So 1826 is a previous swing low. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So that's the fourth wave. Maybe we'll get all the way up there. Maybe not. Um, you know, but anything below that and below the strand lines in here starts to smell more on the bullish side. So I do like uh, the fact that we've held these two lows so far. And, uh, you know, that we started to kind of move higher again. 
uh, if I put the trend line, we also broken above that one on, uh, you know, on the Russell as well. Like that, right? If I'm connecting these highs and these highs back here, a little bit of a retest. And then, uh, you know, upwards we are on the bearish side. Again, I talked about this and then, um, I don't know if I had, was there one more? Yeah, I think this one, it's another one that, you know, could be taken into consideration where you're looking for an A, B, and then one, two. I, I don't know, I don't really like this way as, as a two because it's so large uh, compared with this, let's say, impulse in here. Um, so I prefer the other one better. Either that, um, you know, or, um, you know, this entire decline, um, you know, you can look at it as being a wave one, this entire move, although it's very hard to count it like that. You have to go in a one, two, some kind of a three, four, and five, um, and it's kind of awkward. Right. And this one actually allows for this wave two to travel much higher. But, um, you know, it's just kind of something to to think about. But my preferred interpretation remains this with the continuation um, to the upside. So that's the Russell, um, you know, and the ETF for this one. It's IWM. These are the small caps. Uh, let's take a look at the S&P uh, in here. This is the one that I spend the most time on. And again, uh, you know, with the low here in October 13 at about 3490 uh, through a much bigger and cleaner ABC pullback. Again, broken above this uh, declining trend line, going up in a wave one in an impulse, coming back, retesting, actually getting below it, um, and actually getting into the 61.8. So it's the one that's had the deepest retracement so far at about 39.20. Um, you know, and I kind of pounded the table on Friday, um, you know, saying that I think these are good long entry opportunities in here for a move to the upside uh, with uh, fairly low risk. Uh, because you can find out pretty quickly if you're wrong. So there is a 200 day moving average that sits right here. Um, there is also the 61.8. Uh, there is also this declining trend line and there also this ascending channel. So this whole point in here, if it holds, uh, it can lead to a pretty strong rally and an overtake of this 4200, right? At the minimum, I think we're going to get a rally, but um, you know, it could actually accelerate and continue much higher. The count is as a wave one impulse, uh, minor two, minute one in minute two into the 61.8. And then, you know, the discussion on the lower time frames. Again, you can go and read my reports and you'll see kind of how I'm looking at it. But basically an A, maybe a flat in B and a wave C, uh, back here into the 61.8, uh, trend line and, um, you know, all of that uh, good stuff. I mean, if you look, uh, at the S&P 500 here, I mean, you know, yeah. and, 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 and Wall Street, it's, it's, <laughs> I don't know what's going on in here, guys, but we're getting gaps every single morning. Um, and then they buy towards the end of the day. So they bought in here. Uh, they, they get down, they bought this guy, right? They get down, they bought this guy. They get down, they bought it back. Um, there is, there is something uh, that looks a little fishy <laughs> kind of with the price behavior back in here. They're trying to scare people off. Something it's something it's uh, definitely um, going on with the price, uh, <clears throat> you know, with the price structure. And I think I do have uh, some of those gaps maybe labeled back in here. I mean, look at this, you know, and I can even add the la the latest one. Right. So you've kept down from 4147, bought back in the afternoon, um, sold back, kept down again, um, you know, bottom throughout the day, kept down again. I mean, this was a gap up, you know, sold back and then, and then get gap, gap again. So there's like a bunch of gaps here that are unfilled and, um, you know, they're probably going to, they're probably going to get it. They're probably going to go after them and close these up. So one of the things, I mean, look at the RSI as well. We had a pretty good divergence here as the market is going. So I think into next week, we're probably going to get um, some pre pretty decent rallies um, happening into this market. So that's, um, you know, just a quick analysis on the S&P 500. And I got a few more charts to show you once I run through this list uh, back on um, to the stock charts uh, channel up in there. Um, <clears throat> All right, so now let's um, let's get over. Oh, did I talk about the bearish count here? So here is the bearish counts, right? Um, through a WXY X and another ABC, um, you know, for for a move lower again. What we're looking for is obviously a break below these levels, 
uh, and an acceleration below the 61.8 of this latest rally, right? That would be, you know, that clue that the market would probably overtake these lows and continue to make one more move uh, to the downside. So that's that one. And then I think there is one that's even more bearish uh, in here, right? That looks at this as a one, two, one, two. So this one will be, you know, a, um, a kind of a horrible decline, um, you know, with the longest and the strongest wave uh, about to get unleashed onto these markets, right? So that's, uh, if you're ultra bearish, that's kind of what you want to see the one, two, one, two uh, playbook. All right. So uh, let's go and take a look at the... Uh, Let's go and take a look at FXE. So this is basically, and I think I have the count right here. Uh, this is basically looking at the euro, right? It's the inverse of the US dollar. Um, I think we have a big correction since 2007, 2008. Uh, when we had, uh, you know, you had the massive rally into the, uh, into the euro. And then, uh, you know, here was the 2008 crash, um, with the, you know, rise, the strong rise in the dollar. So you've come down in a wave A, then you've gone into a triangle, uh, into a running triangle, wave B, where wave B of a triangle dips below the origin of that wave A. So you go in an A, B, C, D, and E for a wave B. So this whole structure here, it's a triangle, then you drop sharply lower in a wave C. Uh, so this is a bit more, you know, more complex Elliott wave, but, uh, you know, it will give you a quick uh, view on, on kind of how to look at these things. So that becomes a wave W. That's the first zigzag, A triangle, B down in C. Then you do a A, B, C, 3, A, B, C, 3. So you do um, flat in a wave X in an A, B. So that's an expanded flat. Um, again, just a bit more complex Elliott wave, but basically that's an A down in B, and then you go up in C in a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That makes the connector, and then you drop again in a 5 wave in a wave A, then you go up in B, and then you drop lower in 5 waves in a wave C. So this completes in the FXC, in the Euro, completes um, this decline. And if I drop lower to some smaller time frames in here, you'll start to see... Um, shaping up in here the wave counts uh, let me just kind of I don't like when uh, I'm having a zero up in there so anyway doesn't matter but basically you know that's the that's the move uh, from the lows uh, in a wave one two one two uh, that gives rise to that powerful third of a third um, so one two minor one two minute three four one two three four five four three uh for wave five of three minor then pull back in four and then you finish up a wave five i think that's the that's the you know that's the best count i have at the moment um you know there could be maybe another fourth wave in here a maybe a bit larger with another fifth wave to come i'm not sure we'll see but i, I you know i'm gonna go with this for now as the as the preferred interpretation and what i do like is now that we're selling off here and that's why you see that kind of rally in the dollar which will probably start to find resistance soon if you watch those those updates from uh, the daily uh, uh the daily drip you'll see kind of i'm monitoring the dollar in there every single day and i'm looking at, i've been looking for those 105.50 levels to kind of get targeted so we're very close to those with pretty strong closes on the weekly and the daily there might be some further strength um, you know, but if you're watching FXC and this prior fourth wave low, that's a 96.22 in a wave A. Um, you know, it could be a wave W in an ABC, right? I'm always going with the simplest thing, um, you know, and then as the markets develop, then you, again, like I showed before, you, 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 you know, you change your labeling. Uh, but, you know, let's say it's a wave A, then you're going to go in a B and then you go in a C, just your basic correction. And then, um, you know, the next, uh, move higher in uh, euro and lower in the dollar will begin uh, some fib zones that are probably going to get targeted on this pullback if we're managing to get that deep um you know are probably going to be here towards 50 percent maybe uh maybe back towards 9318 uh on fxc and those are going to be the next um, levels to kind of get excited about some euro longs and a move uh, to the upside and if i jump over to take a look at the uup you know that's uh that's the you know the uh, the dollar ETF in here as it's approaching um, on the dollar index is a bit clearer because you can see the levels. Um, UUP doesn't track it exactly, but I think it's about 105.50 on the DXY. All right, let's also take a quick look at the semiconductors. Um, 
you know, it, this sector, it's, you know, it's been one of the strongest since October 13 low. It's been one of the strongest this year as well. And uh, it's been, um, um, you know, showing signs here of a, uh, um, you know, bottoming process to this left shoulder, right shoulder head. Um, you know, this, this reversal formation back in here. So just like in the indices, we're now looking at this as a one, two, one, two with a continuation higher. We have solid numbers from NVIDIA. There's, uh, uh, you know, quite a few stocks in there that are like on and semiconductors. There's a few others that are acting pretty well. Um, and, and those will probably, uh, help this market continue to trend, uh, to the upside. I don't know if I have a wave count. Um, Probably this is my best, and, and maybe that's a one, two, uh, three, four, and then, you know, continue to kind of trend higher in this uh, fifth wave. I don't think I have anything uh, on the smaller side, but, you know, clean one, two, three, four, five for a wave one, um, down in a wave two, then another impulse here. Uh, likely completed with the wave two either forming or maybe, you know, near completion and then uh, looking for a move higher. Again, if we're dropping below this levels in here, you know, if you're dropping below 216, you start to be a little bit, um, you know, start, I, I would uh, feel a little bit pressured by that price action and, and, and start to think about, you know, possibly adjusting the counts uh, more uh, towards, uh, let's say, the next leg lower or maybe for, uh, um, you know, something different. But that's, uh, you know, that's going to be some cutoff lines in here at about 216, 215, below that, below 207, um, you can start to uh, uh, to think more bearish. Um, obviously, you know, the, 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 the most significant one, it's always that B wave because um, once you move below that, you know, that becomes a three wave move. Until then, you know, you can build that impulse. Uh, so this is the dilemma uh, always in, um, you know, in Elliott wave. And, and the more you do it, you will you'll probably notice it yourself as well in your analysis. It is, um, you know, how you switch uh, from, uh, you know, uh, believing that something is a three wave move and it's actually the beginning of a new, new impulse. So you won't know until those things develop. Uh, but what you do know is, you know, you have those levels to watch for and those are giving you... Uh, certain convictions right not all third waves are the same not all one twos one twos are the same um i would wish you know that everything would be so ideal that um you know the market will be uh you know will give you all the clues all the time uh but it's made to 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 be difficult and for us to try to you know decipher it in here um through this analysis and, and you know many other indicators but um definitely you know one of them so uh you know, that's kind of where we are. I mean, look at this move, right? You would have thought that, for example, this move was a pretty good impulse, right? And uh, you would have expected the correction in a wave B and then in a wave C higher because that looked like an impulse. Um, and it was ba it basically just made a new law. So, you know, that's why it's uh, it's it's imperative that that you know you know your, your what your line in the sand is and and you know what what would make you change your your view and uh, your labeling the other chart i wanted to show you is the chart of ung um this one it's uh here's my count um i've been tracking this one i, I tried to get long in here i'm still long um i've increased my positions uh, uh you know um a little bit more with options and credit spreads um, and even more stock position on this fifth wave. It is um, uh, basically, I mean, you know, it, once you identify that you have a third wave decline, which is which is very visible, then you know um, that, you know, there's not a lot left um, in the tank, um, you know, for a, for a much deeper continuation. So, you know, it's probably a fifth wave done, or maybe, you know, there's some kind of a flat in a fourth wave or a, tri or a triangle. I don't think so. Uh, but if it is, there might be one more low and then you go. So I think that up into May, um, will be in a period of, uh, of a rally, of a corrective move, uh, maybe even an impulse in, um, UNG, which is a natural gas. Uh, I'm counting this from the highs to the lows as just a simple ABC for now. Um, you know, I am aware, believe me, I am aware that this could be a wave one, just so I don't get comments and, and um, <laughs> you know, on Twitter or on YouTube that, hey, you know, why aren't you counting it as a one, two, three? Believe me, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking at, at a lot of, uh, uh, you know, alternates uh, and, uh, 
you know, I don't think there's, there's very few counts that kind of escape me. Um, you know, when I look at the counts, when I look at the charts, I'm aware of, of kind of where things are. Uh, just because I don't place them on the chart, it doesn't mean that I'm not thinking about them. Uh, but okay, that could be a one and a two, and then this could be a three. Um, and then you can get a four in here. So even if it's a, if it's an ABC or even if, or if it's a third wave, uh, you're still going to get something like that in here. Okay, maybe a triangle, maybe a deep flat. Who knows what, again, we don't know what the corrections are going to end up being. Uh, but what I do know is I do know that we're probably not going to break lower. And, uh, you know, you can make money with this either, again, selling uh, put spreads or, you know, buying straight UNG, whatever options, uh, sideways uh, 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 option strategies, whatever that is. Um, and I think that if it's a fourth wave, right, then it should get back towards 38.2%, and that's 1146. So there is plenty of room between here and there to make money from the long side. And that's kind of how I look at it. So I don't really care if it's an ABC or a one, two, three, four. Uh, we'll, uh, uh, we'll see, you know. Uh, um, one more thing I wanted to show you here. Wow, this video is probably getting long. <clears throat> Let me just get a sip of coffee again. <clears throat> All right, uh, sorry about that. So taking a look at the TNX next. Um, so this one, uh, I have a couple of counts, but I'm going to show you the, the, my main one is that eventually, you know, the, the yields will probably be moving higher. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of looking at it as a one, two, one, two, three, four, five. And, and the reason I consider this so important to continue to monitor, um, and, you know, if you're, if you're looking at the macro and analyzing markets, you know, the 10 year yields, it's, um, uh, you know, should be at the forefront of your know, analysis every single day and kind of look, you have to know when you wake up in the morning, where are the 10 years, right? Is it 380? Is it 370? Is it 395? Is it 4? Did we pass 4? Uh, because, uh, you know, the stronger the yields are, uh, you know, the stocks uh, are going to suffer, right? And, and, um, because there is an alternate to, uh, to stock prices, which, you know, it's, uh, you know, they're not that safe, right? They have earnings, they have all kind of volatility in there. And, uh, you know, when you look at uh, bonds and all of that, they're supposed to be, you know, a bit more uh, kind of secure and you're getting more of a, uh, let's say, risk-free yield um, currently to what is it for? Maybe 5% in some of them, um, you know, lower, lower duration bonds and notes and, and bills and stuff like that. So anyway, we're, we're looking at that. And uh, I think, obviously, this was a big uh, third wave move, right, from 1% all the way up to 4.3 or something, whatever the high was. And since then we've corrected, I think we're doing a fourth wave. So this rally will probably fade away and move lower. Uh, this should help stocks advance. Um, I don't know what's going to happen if we do a fifth wave. Is that going to be a short one? And then you move lower. Um, or if it's going to be something that's going to be much stronger. Yet if the fifth wave, it's moving just briefly, the stocks and bonds and yields can go up together. But what I do know is that, um, you know, soon, just like you saw in the UNG, what I do know is that even though, you know, you might be doing something like that, um, and if the market does this, um, you know, what usually happens is stocks are... Uh, anticipating these moves um, in Wall Street and the markets uh, and they expect the, uh, the, the the rates to move lower ahead of time and they're pushing the stocks, stocks higher. So, um, you know, you might see the yields kind of traveling a little bit higher, but actually the stocks uh, uh, advancing. So that's going to be like, what's going on? Well, what's going on is that the market actually expects that right a drop in yields let's say over the next several years um in a possible wave b or the wave two whatever this is going to end up being before let's say the next uh, move higher in yields uh you know begins once i'm uh, once i'm much older but um that's the idea and and um you know for right now i'm looking at this as an abc maybe another abc in here uh probably triangle flat who knows uh but pretty much pretty much sideways let's say maybe for the rest of this year so that's in TNX. And then uh, take a look at the uh, inverse correlation between this. And I'm watching this daily as I'm trading too, because, uh, you know, the drop in yields, for example, this was a pretty good drop in yield that, uh, you know, led to several uh, rallies actually in the markets, right? So if you're doing spreads intraday or scalping and you're seeing the yields dropping, but the stock's dropping, dropping as well, then you know something is not connected here and, uh, you know, you can get on the long side. Um, so back in here, you can see yields dropping, uh, you know, actually there was a divergence, uh, interesting divergence in here is the yields were pushing higher. Um, you know, the, the 
the stocks here, the S&P 500 was diverging as well. Again, just maybe anticipating already that the yields are probably going to drop. So that's what I'm watching. Probably, uh, you know, the TNX to come a bit lower uh, and then the stocks to start moving to the upside. So we'll, uh, we'll monitor that. But this is a, a clean, as clean as it comes, inverse relationship between the 10-year yield and uh, the S&P 500, at least for... You know, there are periods when they kind of go together, but, uh, um, you know, most of the time we have an inverse correlation in here, especially with the QQQs, because those are more um, rate sensitive uh, sectors up in there. So that's the TNX. Uh, all right. So let me take you over to uh, the other charts into the S&P 500. And I want to show you the correlations a little bit, um, you know, between uh, the S&P and uh, some of these sectors. And, uh, you know, then we we'll jump over to Bitcoin as well. But basically, you know, you can see here, that's the S&P 500. And this is the um, <clears throat> relative strength of the sectors um, that, you know, make up the S&P 500 versus, um, you know, versus the benchmark, right, versus the S&P 500. And uh, here is XLK. Uh, since those uh, December lows, um, you know, clearly outperforming the market pretty well. So there's still, you know, even even with the markets dropping in here, look at the ratio between XLK and the S&P. It's not dropping. Um, you know, I think there's still a, a pretty good appetite to continue to accumulate XLK, uh, maybe even XLC, XLY. Uh, here is XLC uh, pushing higher, a little bit of a correction now. Uh, XLY, again, just a simple correction um, as the markets are dipping lower, right? Uh, this continues to kind of outperform or stay remain flat financials are actually starting to turn higher and outperform uh the s p 500 uh industrials are pushing back to the upside with the s p dropping so what's what's up with that uh energy it's underperforming uh utilities are underperforming um you know healthcare is underperforming staples a little bit of a push in staples with this later sell-off but nothing crazy so again i think um you know since december uh, the end of December, beginning of 2023, things have changed a little bit here in the market. And um, these ratios here are are very important to watch because they will uh, tell you kind of where the money is moving overall. So here is, um, again, just, uh, um, you know, a simple ratio here between um, the QQQ and uh, the SPY. Um, so this is the triple Qs. Uh, uh, I mean, look at that. You know, since... Uh, Again, beginning of 2023, um, it's been obviously out of favor since 2021, since we've had at the top in the markets in 2022 with double retest. And, uh, you know, they dumped all the NASDAQ and all the high flyers and everything, right? And, um, you know, look at this ratio kind of turning back. I think this is probably going to end up being a correction and then a move to the upside. So in my view, I think owning QQQ versus SPY could be the way to go. Uh, this year. Uh, so watch this ratio for uh, for further corrections. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you, yeah, here it is. So um, I, I kind of had to go back and find it. I apologize. But uh, basically, you know, look at what the market did. And I put this on Twitter as well. Um, you know, and I get the argument that, um, you know, maybe the markets have been kind of uh, pricing this in already. And, um, you know, we they really didn't, um, you know, um, this this uh, high rates haven't had their way through the system just yet and all of that i get it um you know but basically you know you're at the same levels um you know when you started basically to increase rates uh from one percent almost all the way to five you know we might even go higher than that um and you know there was no real crash in the markets i mean yeah you did drop whatever it was 20 percent uh you know from the highs uh, but then you came back with the rates continuing to increase. So why would this be, um, you know, a, why would the market be so resilient with 5% rates? Because you would have thought, uh, you know, with such huge increases that the market would basically crash much, much lower. So what does it have to be? Do the rates have to be at 7 for this market to crash? Uh, are we lagging with the economy, with the recession, with the depression? I don't know, right? Before you're actually starting to push back to the downside, is the market waiting for the Fed to start cutting before it actually, uh, so for the things to start getting really ugly before you actually start getting a, a big move in the market? Again, these are just questions. Uh, and I'm surprised that the market is still so resilient with the rates being where they are. Um, so, uh, 
you know, and the Fed, the only way the Fed will start cutting if it's uh, the economy and, um, you know, uh, unemployment and we're starting to get, let's say, uh, uh, bad economic data, uh, you know, threats of recession, um, stuff where they actually need to become stimulative. Uh, but I think they're probably going to continue to, you know, raise a little bit here and there, maybe 25, maybe 50. I don't think they're going to do 50, but, you know, 25, uh, uh, maybe for the next few meetings or something like that. And then they're probably just kind of wait and watch, right, uh, to see what happens. So I would pay attention to the economic data as well. But so far it's been, it's been, uh, you know, in different, different areas, right? It's a, it's a kind of a mixed picture there as well. But at least, you know, it's not a, it's not a, you know, a crushing economy in any, in any way, shape or form. I mean, the GDP numbers are still pretty okay. So uh, that's just something on um, this. Then I also wanted to show you a couple of these longer term trends. I mean, look at the S&P 500. Uh, look at this. <laughs> look at this 100 year chart, guys, um, you know, and um, how we're continuing to, you know, be bullish. We had, you know, this obviously this this correction here that tested the 50 month moving average have been testing several times. You want this to drop below. Uh, you want the PPO to drop below that to start to uh, be negative on the market and expect, uh, you know, bear market behavior, like serious bear market behavior that can take, you know, several years. Uh, so far, uh, we've been holding and climbing out of there and trying to do that kind of one, two, one, two, uh, PPO here coming towards, and this is all, well, this is just MACD, uh, coming towards the zero line and, and, uh, you know, looks like he wants to curve back to the upside. Look at the histogram below that's trying to get back above zero. So these are again, uh, um, you know, just to keep things in perspective, uh, on, on, you know, uh, staying with the bullish side, it's always, I think, you know, you have an extra uh, advantage from the trend overall, right? Depending on, on uh, you know, how, what kind of a time frame you're looking at. And then look at 25 years. Again, you know, we were waiting for this to kind of get back towards 3200, but it hold the central line. Um, and that's, again, just a chart from 2009, even lower than that, right? 2003, 2004, you know, nice uptrend. Uh, in a beautiful channel with the middle channel as well being supported again if we drop below and we close then you know we're coming back towards 32 it doesn't mean a crash back towards 24 but you know um these here it's again it's it's uh you know kind of encouraging um looking further i mean look at the ppo already climbing up into the zero the divergence here was was beautiful right as the markets and you know we 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 had long calls as as the market was making these lows. I mean, look at this. You know, so there was there was no more uh, gas left into the sell off. Um, you know, and the moving averages were already kind of starting to uh, slow down, and uh, you know the price behavior suggested there was buying coming in, and and there was not that much uh, relentless selling anymore. And we are back above the zero line. Uh, which means that a 12 is above the 26 and and it's pushing um, and it's pushing higher so that's a again that's an interesting uh, that's an interesting view back in there and then this one I put on Twitter as well right just a couple of simple trend lines right and and uh, basically your uh, 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 you know large confluence level right there just on a clean chart right I mean we did we did back below we close actually back below this this blue line so that's something that i want to see the market retake over the next week and then and then get out of there um to reduce that pressure but um you know we're above this this green as well so big confluence very big moment for the markets uh at the current juncture um <clears throat> at the current junction uh in um in here also take a look bullish percent index basically you know i caution the members that you know there could be a little bit of uh, resistance and selling coming in uh, as we were sitting at about 70. Um, not as high as i would have liked it to be it wasn't as clear cut as some of the other rallies were to be to have confidence you know i thought it was probably going to push a bit higher but anyway it rejected to 70 came back to 50 so we cleaned up a lot of that uh, kind of bullishness now people are getting all of a sudden bearish and um, you know thinking that okay the feds are going to raise and uh, all hell is going to break rules uh, you know uh, because the pc was a little bit higher and whatever but um you know we're back towards the middle line in here so not not a whole lot of things and then uh, take a look at the new highs versus new lows you know since december look at how many 52 week highs we've had and then how how little 52 week lows yeah we did deteriorate a little bit in here uh, and we're starting to make new lows again, new 52 week lows, but just a few, I think there were like five or six stocks that were making that into the S&P 500. Uh, but overall, uh, it's a much greener 
uh, picture since those October lows uh, than anything we've seen we've seen prior. Right, this was where the market was still kind of creating the top, so they were they were dropping in here, and and you know more red started to appear. So that's kind of how you read it, right? You can see like the first uh, you know signs were here, then you had them again, then again. You know, then they started to accelerate 52 week lows, 52 week lows up all the way until, <laughs> you know, we've gotten like 240 or 250 stocks, uh, more than half uh, were making 52 week um, lows in uh, the S&P 500, um, you know, with another, uh, um, you know, a little bit less uh, 52 week lows. So that was a big divergence uh, between how many stocks were getting beaten down and actually you know what the price uh, was doing the price was making new lows but not the 52 week low so that led to this rally so here we are being green now um you know with less 52 week lows happening so again i don't think you know uh, based on this i think we moved on for this mess right we'll see that's just kind of my view um you know here at the moment so let's jump over and take a look at bitcoin guys i'm going to close off with this i got a couple of counts to show you so again this one it's um you know something that we're monitoring on those on that daily drip and uh, you know i do bitcoin video updates in the pro room every day we talk about a lot of these details and kind of how to approach this um but basically assuming that this was a way five low you know just like uh, you've had in the markets overall um, yeah, this one came a little bit later. I think it was November 21, November 22, whenever this happened. Um, but since then, so just about a month later that the S&P 500 did, I think this was the, all the FTX drama, uh, wave one, wave two. Um, so this is a pretty clean count, right? There's not a lot of arguments here, I guess, you know, uh, move up, down, then, then the big third wave in here. Um, and then you did the flat in four. We talked about this in a, in a three, three, five, and you know with the push higher. Now, what is this? What's going on here? Because Bitcoin sold off along with the markets. It was a little bit delayed because these twenty three five eighty were kind of holding ground. Um, so is this a wave five, uh, or is this wave one or five? Well, if it is wave one or five, then then current levels have to hold, and that, that's the sixty one point eight that I always watch. So um, back to the golden zone. Uh, again, just a, uh, you know, let's say a pretty nice confluence back here with the rising trend line with the 61.8 with previous horizontal support as well uh, from these levels, right? I mean, this, this is more of an area, not, a, not a such a precise level, but, it, you know, this at uh, 22,473, 22,500 offered support. So big confluence, I think we're going to rally out of here. Uh, if it's a wave two, it's all I would like to see. I would not like to see anything more than that pushing to the downside. Okay, so um, we need to start moving higher. Um, anything below these levels will start to hint that uh, actually you have a five way five completion and uh, you know you're moving basically into a larger ABC uh, move into Bitcoin and uh, you know that can take you maybe back towards 20k or maybe even a little bit lower but uh, you know uh, so it, this is what i want to see now now i want to see a move above this 23581 right and uh, again i think this is a pretty good kind of risk reward on the long side too because if you um you know it, it, the longs in here don't have a lot of room uh, um you don't have a lot of room to be wrong on right so i think um, 78.6 would be, you know, a level that I would watch, uh, to kind of get out, uh, some kind of a daily close below these levels, below 22,000. If you're closing below 22,000, I would be out. So what are we trading now? 23, uh, you know, mm, so you don't have, you have basically, you know, a thousand dollar risk, um, to find out if, um, if this is, and to me, it's a pretty decent quality setup. Um, and again, you don't have to go in, uh, and this is not financial advice, but it's kind of how, how I do things sometimes. It's not, you know, you have to go in all at once, right? You can just kind of build a position, you know, get a quarter of what, um, you want to have. So I don't know if you want to buy a full Bitcoin, buy, you know, 0 0.25. And then as the market moves higher, you continue to add on that position as their conviction grows. And if you're losing, right, you're losing only, uh, a quarter of that 
uh, total position that let's say you're having as part of your strategy uh, that's one of the ways to kind of do it so uh, again i'm looking for for a move out of here let's see if that happens but um you know if if this is a five wave completion already right this wave is done um you know then this entire advance in bitcoin uh from here to here has to be corrected um and it's not going to be corrected uh, you know just with this right? ain't going to be enough uh, you need something proportionate to this move so whatever in time all right so however long this lasted all right so i guess if it was from november uh so you got one month uh almost three months right you've got uh december january and so um and then here we are you know you got to take at least i don't know maybe half of that moving sideways so let's say just visually that that's that so you got to i mean look you got to come all the way up to here to correct um just time wise uh this entire advance and then you got to correct in price now you can choose the fourth wave and this can be something like that you know time wise like that um you know or it can come a bit lower than that right there 20,370 um in a second wave and this you know again becomes in a channel and you're correcting so if that's a wave one then you know five waves in wave one then you're looking for that correction hopefully this not didn't get too messy follow follow with me but um that's that's the idea now for the bears um you know i put this on twitter he got a lot of attention you know at the time um you know it, is this still a flat right do you have a, a four times uh you know the the wave two in here in a wave four um it's it's extended it's a lot you know i get it um but it's it's not that bad so you know if it's if it's a wave c of a flat um you know if you're starting to crack below these levels here and which which coincide with the 61.8 at 18,657 so anything below i would call it 19k anything below 19k 18.5 um you know would suggest that there's another move lower coming in bitcoin so uh, that's that's where we are right so either a wave one with a wave two one and then a wave two three waves that have to stay above these levels anything below that will unleash this wave five to the downside so hopefully this clears it up guys and um you know helps you kind of think how you're uh, um, you know looking at your own wave counting and all of that so uh, you know come and visit me on uh, twitter at elliot cafe check out my free newsletter go ahead and subscribe to this guy and then also come and visit me on telegram take a 30 day trial be part of my team here with the guys and uh, you know as always i'll uh, be happy to continue to provide you with uh, you know uh, hopefully decent information uh, in the future i appreciate you for uh, subscribing and sticking uh, you know with me in this channel um, every single week and um, don't forget to subscribe and like i will see you next time bye bye